Um, so our peripheral neuropathy uh, involves a lot of symptoms and numbness, tingling, and burning sensation. Um, those are most of the, the uh, symptoms that we see as podiatrists. And some of the exam findings we'll find are uh, people have decreased sensation, which will increase their chances of developing uh, wounds to the bottom of their feet without knowing that they have these wounds. Um, other symptoms are, besides decrease in sensation, we have a decrease in motor function. And so we lose balance, we become unsteady, and uh, we can develop something as well called drop foot. And what that is, is when we're walking, our, we have a hard time bringing our feet and our toes up, and our foot almost acts as it slaps on the ground, and that can be very unsteady. Uh, Um, some of the risk factors that uh, are uh, pr that uh, cause peripheral neuropathy, number one we see is uh, diabetes. Uh, a lot of diabetics, uh, they have uncontrolled blood sugars. Uh, we like to keep our hemoglobin A1C around seven or below. Uh, once the blood sugar gets higher than this, uh, the body has a hard time managing this extra sugar. And what the cells do is they almost go into a survival mode where uh, the cells try to hold in as much water as possible. It's almost as if we were in the desert and they're just trying to keep from dehydration. So these nerves swell and then uh, they will press on uh, the structures that cause impingement on the nerves and they get the numbness, the tingling, and burning sensation. Um, other causes that we uh, find from peripheral neuropathy uh, can be due from trauma. Uh, ankle sprains uh, can actually pull on, on nerves. Uh, and what happens with this is then we lose some motor function as well. Uh, along with that is blunt trauma. If something really hard hits the side of our leg, it can cause a lot of uh, scar tissue in that area, which impinges on nerves. And that also can uh, result in, in these issues as well. Uh, metabolic imbalances. Uh, vitamin B is a very important uh, mineral that we have that can help support uh, nerve health. If there's low uh, vitamin B, that can cause neuropathy. Hereditary conditions, there are uh, neuromuscular conditions that uh, cause us to be prone to developing neuropathy as well. Uh, toxins, uh, various medications along with alcohol use can cause damage to nerves resulting this as well. Um, chemotherapy is another uh, issue that we see that can result. And also there's a condition called idiopathic neuropathy. And what this means is there's really no cause or we can't find a source of why we're developing uh, the neuropathy. So some stats on peripheral neuropathy. Um, overall, it affects 2.4% of the general population. Um, regarding diabetic patients, 60 to 70% of them will develop uh, this during their lifetime. Uh, diabetic foot ulcers or wounds, uh, there's a 3.3% risk every year and a 15 to 20% lifetime risk. Um, a couple other interesting stats, 85% of diabetic patients have an ulcer or a wound prior to a amputation. We try to prevent amputation at all costs uh, with all our patients. Uh, there's a 10% risk of amputation after developing this wound or ulcer. Uh, and if a nerve is stretched 15% of its length, it actually cuts off 100% of the blood supply. So it's very important that we protect these nerves. <clears throat> so what is our role as a podiatrist? Our role is to identify these symptoms and why they are occurring, <clears throat> whether it be underlying diabetes, other conditions, uh, metabolic issues, then we, uh, we can locate these specific reasons and help patients get the correct treatment they need if we need to collaborate uh, with other physicians for that team approach. Uh, in regards to neuropathy, if it is one-sided of the body versus uh, affecting both sides, such as this image to the right, um, the image on the left, there's uh, sporadic areas where the numbness uh, or neuro neuropathic symptoms could be occurring involving separate nerves. On the right side, it's more of a stock and glove uh, situation, which that means it's affecting both sides uh, the same amount. Uh, we really need to be careful about um, 
and cautious and realistic about our goals of treatment. Uh, one thing that we uh, really need to realize is with numbness, tingling, and burning, when neuropathy becomes painful, our main goal is to reduce that pain. Um, yes, we want to protect patients from uh, developing wounds, which could potentially lead to amputations as well. Um, but we need to have realistic expectations. Once nerves get damaged, it's very hard to repair these nerves. Uh, so if we can take the proper steps to help prevent that from occurring in the first place, that is very beneficial. <clears throat> um, there are some additional testing modalities that we can use uh, besides some of our exam findings. Um, a couple tests that we do utilize are NCV or nerve uh, velocity conduction testing along with EMGs. And this will test the speed of nerves and how they travel. If there's an impingement uh, or an issue with a nerve, it will allow us to locate where exactly this is occurring. Um, MRIs can be helpful as well. Uh, we get a good picture of the nerves and what's around it. If something under the skin may be impinging on the nerves. Diagnostic nerve blocks are becoming very helpful uh, in our practice as well. What this involves is we use a little numbing medication and we can numb certain areas of nerves and if that relieves the patient's pain, then we know where the nerve issue is. If there's continued pain, then we need to look somewhere else or higher up. So usually with these diagnostic nerve blocks, we'll start towards the toes and then work our way up the leg. Um, there's also nerve biopsies that can be performed that can help um, diagnose uh, nerve-related issues. One condition that uh, can be very hard to treat and that we uh, C is called complex regional pain syndrome. And what this is, it's, it's a condition where nerves get very confused and the exact cause of this is unknown, but it can be very painful and excruciating for patients. This can result from injury, whether that be um, from a, a trauma uh, such as an ankle sprain or ankle break, or it could be from surgery trauma as well. Um, the other side is there can, this can occur with, with no injury as well. Uh, patients typically experience severe pain, some swelling, weakness, color changes, and temperature changes as well. So you can see in this picture to the right, uh, that right foot is, is uh, the foot that's affected by this complex regional pain syndrome. Um, so as we discussed a little bit earlier, with diabetic patients, we like hemoglobin A1Cs to be around seven or below. Um, healthy diet and exercise is very, very helpful as well. Um, we need to monitor uh, this progression of neuropathy and try to keep it under control as best we can. Uh, some modalities we can use along the way that can help do this are topical medications, uh, oral meds, uh, pain management clinic can become helpful as well. Uh, physical therapy has some great modalities to use, uh, some bracing techniques, and we always save surgical intervention for last, um, outweighing those risks and benefits if surgery would be appropriate. And one thing to keep in mind with surgical intervention is if there's a structural deformity, we need to treat that um, before considering treating nerve issue because the structural deformity may be what's causing these nerve issues. Some of the topical agents we use uh, are called or are referred to as aspercream, capsaicin, lidocaine, and then topical compound medications where they have a mixture of uh, numbing agents and neuropathic uh, medications as well. Some of the oral meds that we use, uh, vitamin B, like I mentioned earlier, is very important for nerve health. Uh, vitamin C has also been shown to be helpful. Uh, gabapentin is a very common uh, nerve medication that we utilize. With this medicine, it's very important to gradually increase the dosage. Uh, once we get to a level that we feel is appropriate, then that's where we will stay. Uh, Lyrica, Cymbalta, and Amitriptyline are a few others. Physical ther therapy can be helpful as well. Uh, we utilize uh, therapy to help with strengthening of lower extremities. Uh, like I mentioned earlier with drop foot, for example, uh, if we can focus on keeping as much strength as possible that can help minimize unsteadiness and falls, which can relate in, and result in further injury. Uh, there's a really neat technique called neurogliding which we use in post-op uh, nerve uh, surgeries, where that will help nerves to glide appropriately and prevent any scar tissue that can cause further issues after a patient undergoes nerve surgery. Um, therapy uh, focuses 
a lot on gait stability too. Some of the bracing that we find helpful, uh, ankle sprains, we can use a few of our uh, more common braces are listed there. Uh, they're stirrup or lace-up style braces. And then another uh, brace is an ankle foot orthosis. This is helpful uh, in that drop foot condition I was talking about. Uh, this allows the foot to stay at a right angle. And so when you're walking, you're not getting that foot dragging um, and, help, and that will help uh, patients to stay more stable. Uh, so with surgical intervention, uh, we can use this uh, when we can locate exactly where a nerve can be entrapped. Uh, there are different surgical techniques that we use. Uh, decompression involves freeing up around the nerve uh, to give it more room uh, to uh, be more comfortable and prevent uh, impingement in those neuropathic symptoms. Uh, neurectomy is when we uh, cut a nerve out and remove it. Um, there have been uh, new advances in nerve wraps and there's also a technique called a blind loop where we actually take two nerves and we can reroute them and put the nerves together. And so that can help reduce patient's uh, pain in certain areas. Um, some of the common nerve conditions we treat surgically uh, besides trauma would be a neuroma uh, and tarsal tunnel syndrome. Uh, just like we can develop carpal tunnel syndrome in our wrists, we can also develop that on the insides of our ankles. It can be very challenging to treat, uh, and so we have to take great caution and have a strict protocol after surgery to help prevent any further issues. Uh, pain stimulators are becoming more popular as well, uh, and what they do is there's actually a, a stimulator that um, provides almost um, a pain control uh, through a gait training, through a pain, con pain control theory, which uses uh, a modality so it sends transmitter to the nerve and it can help reduce those neuropathic symptoms and retrain the brain uh, to not have as much pain. Um, with that CRPS condition, complex regional pain syndrome, there are sympathetic nerve blocks which can be formed too. Uh, these are injections in the spine to help uh, reduce that condition. Uh, so in conclusion, uh, the main takeaways, uh, every patient presents differently uh, with peripheral neuropathy. There are many etiologies and causes of nerve pain. Um, it's very important to uh, examine carefully uh, and use additional testing when appropriate. Uh, those diagnostic blocks have become very important in our, in our practice in, in locating exactly where pathology occurs. Uh, and then it's always important to remember the goals of treatment and those realistic expectations. Uh, there's always that risk and benefit with surgery. And so if that is what we feel is, is appropriate, we have to know going into it, we may not be able to reach a pain-free level, but if we can reduce that pain, that is a success. Um, so I'd like to thank everybody for joining us tonight. I know we had a little technical difficulty there for a little bit, but I uh, think we got that worked out okay. Um, I appreciate everybody joining in tonight. And if anybody has any questions or um, any other topics they'd like covered, we'd like to start doing these uh, presentations about once a month. Um, so I'd like to uh, thank everybody and, and have a great night.